The almond tree is blossoming. The golden sun is shining and the birds are chirping. So you can be darn sure that Tu Bishvat is here. The new year of the trees. Yes, the almond tree has become somewhat of a symbol of Tu Bishvat in the modern era because it blossoms around this time of year. Even if you didn't come out here to check, you might already be familiar with that from the book of Jeremiah. In his first vision, he sees a branch of an almond tree and God tells him, ah, you have seen well because it's a sign that my word will be quick to come. Just like the almond tree is quick to blossom. It blossoms well before all the other trees before the spring. And if you look in the Hamash, you'll find other aspects of the almond are showcased. So for example, in the book of Bereshit, we have Jacob sends his sons down to Egypt, the best produce of the land, and among them are almonds. The next story in the book of Shemot, we have the construction of the menorah. And there it says, The cups of the menorah were decorated somewhat like the almond. And it mentions also the flowers. Here, you can see the flowers from the tree. And therefore, the almond tree is somewhat of a symbol of beauty. And the next story is in the book of Bamidbar. There's a confrontation with Korah. And then after that, there's this sort of competition where the leader of each tribe brings a staff in front of the Mishkan. And then the next day, they come to pick up the staffs. And they see, lo and behold, that the staff of Aaron blossomed flowers and grew almonds. And that was a sign from God that uh, Aaron was chosen to be the Kohen Gadol and then God tells Moses to take that staff of Aaron and put it in the Holy of Holies next to the Ark of the Covenant forever as a sign that Aaron and his descendants were chosen to be the Kohanim. And I want to focus a little bit on that because I think it's pretty heavy that you know this almond branch is kept in such an important place. So I think there's another lesson we can learn from almonds. So I came out here. I live in the city of Modi'in, which you could see right over there. And this hilltop is just north of the Ayalon Valley down there. And the, there's a high water table in this area, which is very favorable for almond trees. They require a lot of water. Each almond that you see on the tree is equivalent to around a gallon of water that the tree needed. So there's around 100 almond trees scattered around this this hilltop and you can pick the almonds off the tree you'll find them in the hard shell which you crack open with a rock and then inside an almond that looks just like one you'd buy in the store but if you taste it from this tree and from the vast majority of the trees around here you'll find that it's bitter uh, it takes a couple of seconds for the taste to kick in but it tastes like an apple seed and then there's also like this tingling, numbing sensation that you get in your mouth. And these bitter almonds are actually poisonous. They contain a compound called amygdalin, which breaks down to cyanide in the body. And if you eat too many of them, like 50, 60, 70, it could actually be fatal. For a small, for a small child, even less. Just like a handful could be, could be dangerous for a child. Um, but there are a rare few, and I did find like three here, uh, I just took a nibble to taste, but there are a few which have sweet almonds. And by sweet, I mean it tastes just like one you'd buy in the store. And if you taste one and it's sweet, you know the whole tree is sweet. If you taste one and it's bitter, you know the whole tree is bitter. And the reason that the vast majority are bitter is because it's a defense mechanism. Uh, if animals find that the seed is sweet, they'll devour all of them. And that tree will not have any children not have any grandchildren, and it's basically got no shot to reproduce. It was just a, a single gene mutation that, that makes them sweet anyway in the first place. And the vast majority of them therefore are bitter. And the animals can't eat the seeds because it's dangerous to them. And therefore the seeds can be planted and grow into the almond tree's kids and grandkids. And at the end of the day, just like most organisms, not all organisms, the tree just wants to proliferate its offspring. But when humans came along, they find the rare sweet almond tree. They actually said, this is something that's valuable to us that 
we want to cultivate. We're not just going to eat them all and that's the end of the tree. We're going to plant them and grow more sweet almond trees. And if you go down to the Valley of Ayalon, actually, there, there are groves and groves, several thousand of them, many more than there are out here in the wild, and those are all sweet almonds. So interestingly, in the long run, the sweet almond trees had the advantage, and today in the world, there are many more sweet almond trees than bitter ones. And I think, getting back to the almond branch in the Holy of Holies, I think that's the central idea that the Torah is trying to teach us, that we need to learn from the almond tree. Uh, it's a popular idea around the time of Tu Bishpat to say that people are like trees. But we need to be like the almond tree and be sweet and kind, even though it makes us vulnerable and puts us at risk. In the long run, that is what is going to be advantageous for us, and that is the way to get ahead, to be successful, to have many offspring that are successful, uh, even though it might seem to make us vulnerable. And that's a lesson we can learn from the almond trees. So thank you for watching. Have a great holiday. I mentioned there's a high water table around here, which is great for almond trees to grow, and also good for digging wells, like this one.